Stanislaw with Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, we'll be mixing some different plugins to put together an inspirational project. Let's get started. Right at the top of my timeline, I'm going to use a transition. So I'm going to jump into my transitions tab inside Final Cut Pro, selecting one of the transitions from the M Transitions light pack. Now I like the way that's coming in, but let's go ahead and make some adjustments to this. For all of our adjustments, we're going to go into the inspector. The first thing I'll do in here is I'm going to flip this because I like this to come from left to right. I'll be using several different quotes. So to access the M quotes, I'm going to go into the title template tab and then select a quote from my library. I think this one will work really well and I'll drag and drop it and adjust the time. My timeline is a little compressed so I can't really see what's happening. So I'll hit command plus to zoom in on my timeline. And I think I'll adjust this and have it start a little bit after my transition. By default, a majority of the title templates are set up to animate in and animate out, and I don't necessarily want that because it's a little quick. I'll use the inspector and select the animation out and turn that off. And what that'll do is now it will play through the entire duration of that title template without animating out. If there's any formatting you might want to do, this is when I'll typically do it. I'm going to move my author's name down. We want to make this a little easier to read, so I'll change the background, make it a bit darker, and I'll adjust the color and opacity to make that happen. And as you can see, now it's going to be a lot easier to read with that background. Next, I'll use an M prism effect, and to find those, we'll need to jump into the effects tab of Final Cut Pro, and then select M prism. Just like all our different effects, hovering over them gives you a preview of what's going to happen and it's showing me a preview of the title right now and I'm going to place this on my clip. I'm going to use the on-screen controls just to set up where I want that prism to be. And then the next thing I'll do is actually use the blur controls to completely blur out the background. If I set this to zero, the entire thing will be blurry. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I have my various shots of the city and I'm going to transition to a country scene. What I want to do is smooth over this harsh cut between these two clips. So we go from the city to the country and the way I'll do that is with another transition. I like the softness of this so I'll use another bokeh that's pretty soft. And I want this to go from left to right. In my inspector, I'll make sure I hit the flop button. And the next thing I'll do is change the hue to this green color. At the beginning of my transition, I'm setting a keyframe at zero degrees. Then we'll move forward and I'll change that to about a 50 degree. Now this will play back and animate from that orange to green as it moves through that transition. Let's work with these next set of clips. I'm going to jump back into M Prism and what I want to do is I kind of want to soften the scene a little bit. So I'm reviewing these different items and I'll place this one onto my clip. I like the overall effect, but what I'd like to do is adjust the hue of the light leaks to give it a little bit of color. And I'll do the same thing for the next clip. I'll review a different prism. Next, I'll place it onto that clip. Inside M Prism, the on screen controls will let me adjust the scale and position, but that's about it. For anything else, I'll need to jump into the inspector to work with the hue and the leak saturation and brightness. These next two clips carry some movement going from right to left and I really want a space on the right side to place my quote. So we're going to need to flip this. I'm going to move up to the top of my effect controls and use the search box 
to find an effect called flip. Earlier, you've seen me drag and drop an effect onto a clip, but we can also double click any of our effect for anything selected. In this case, I have these two clips selected and I can double click flipped and that'll apply it to both clips. This has created a perfect spot to put a new quote right into this clip. So we'll go back to our quotes and place another one right on top. You can cut these templates, but I like to just drag to a new duration. Otherwise, when you cut it, it actually makes two different copies of it. This way, it just saves me a little time. I'll resize this and get it in position. And we'll go back into the inspector, and I'm going to turn off the animation in and out and turn off this drop zone. Next, I'll play back that section and see how that looks. With the animation in out deselected, you can see that it just stays static through the duration of that template. Because I'm transitioning from one section to another, I'm going to use another light transition and this time I'll use the light film burn. We'll run into a fairly common problem that I hear a lot of people have. When I'm playing this back, you can see the transitions working, but the template isn't transitioning with it. We need to make this a compound clip by hitting Alt and G together to bundle these two pieces together as a flattened clip. The reason why that happens is the transition is only working with the primary storyline. If you see my timeline, my template on top is not being affected by a transition. It's treated as a separate source. So by bundling these two together, the transition will work without any further issue. In situations where you feel like an effect or something should be working, try using a compound clip. Let's move on to this next clip. I really like how airy this one is and a prism effect here will make this look even better. One of the greatest strengths about using mPrism is that it really looks like you're shooting through a bit of a prismatic glass. And so we have these clones that appear and I'm just dialing this down a little bit to give this a bit of a more airy prismatic feel. Due to my clones affecting so much of this, if I change the hue of this, it'll almost work like a color correction, just slightly accentuating that clip. I feel that mPrism works best with bright, detailed scenes, but in this scene, we have a bit of an overcast sky. Adding very bright light leaks might not work out best for this, but we can still add a prism effect to this to give it a little bit of that aberration and a little bit of that softness that we've created earlier in this project. I'm just gonna dial down the effect and I'm gonna take the clones down as well. And working with the brightness and saturation in the hue, I can give it just a little bit of color making this look more like it's an artifact of the lens that we have. Let's move on to this next clip and you can really see how the clone layer can affect this and really alter the size and shape of our footage. When shooting through different prisms and glass, we'll have some chromatic aberration and that's what we can create with this red, green, and blue channel by separating them just a little bit, gives it a very authentic chromatic aberration. Before we move on to the next clip, let's just flip this clip as well. For our next clip that appears after this, we have an astronaut, and I want this character to be looking up at our astronaut. We already have quite a lot of flare happening in our scene, and I just want to accentuate this. When I hover over my previews, it's showing me the previous clip, and that's because I have that one selected. So I'll need to select my astronaut and then hover over it to get a preview. And just like before, I'll move the, my position but I noticed my flare is a little too intense here. So I'm going to adjust this with the footage opacity and bring this way down. And that's gonna give me a bit of a more realistic look. 
as I really want to show off the rainbow flare in this more than the footage clone. This will take us to our last clip in this project, and here I just want to add a quote. It's actually one of my favorite quotes from Pablo Picasso. We're just going to shorten this down a little bit. I'm going to play this back so we can see what this looks like. And I can see that I'm going to need to move this down. So I can use the on-screen controls to move this down, but that's not going to give me a perfect alignment. I might move it X or Y. So I want to use just the inspector to push it just down in the Y. This way it'll stay completely centered and I can make my further adjustments here. Like in this case, I just want to move this quote to the far left. I want this to animate after it appears, so we'll move that and shorten that down. And then I think I'll just turn off that animation out and bundle it together with another compound clip so I can add a transition to this. One last time, I'll select my items I want to group together. I'll hit Alt-G and name my compound clip. And now I can go ahead and add a transition to this. Because this is already a dark scene, I don't think I'll use a light leak. Instead, I'll just use a standard cross dissolve and that will dissolve it back out to black. Let's take a final look at the completed project. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.